uh, and Starboard getting in there. I think it's sort of emblematic of the questions investors have. And you've seen the reaction in the stock post Figma. What are the things that you feel like need to be answered, that people need to understand about this deal and the broader creative landscape as you're getting ready to kick off not just Adobe Max, but also an investor, investor day? Well, John, first, thanks so much for being here and taking the time to be with us. And it's, the energy is palpable when you look at Max and the fact that, as you said, after three years, uh, you know, we're back in L.A. And just the energy of talking to people and how creativity continues to make a difference is great. To your question on investors, I think, you know, we use the financial analyst meeting to really talk about our strategy and why digital continues to be a massive uh, tailwind for us when you think about what's happening in terms of how it's transforming, whether it's work, whether it's education, whether it's entertainment. Uh, and I think the macroeconomic environment uh, that exists today, everybody's trying to think uh, about whether there's some short-term opportunity. And I think from our perspective, we're just continuing to say, how do we invest in building this company uh, for the long run? I think specifically as it relates to Figma, Figma is one of those rare companies uh, that has created an incredible new platform, whether it's about advancing product design or about whether it's uh, brainstorming and ideation. And so we just believe that the opportunity to partner with them and to create that sort of next generation of creativity and productivity is, is a you know, game-changing opportunity. And so we're excited about it, and we will at the financial analyst meeting talk about how our core business continues to be strong. I think that's one of the questions mm. uh, that people have, which is, is this a defensive or is this a you know, uh, sort of looking around the corner move? And we certainly think it's a looking around the corner. Not defensive. Not defensive at all. Okay, I want to get back to that. But first I want to talk about a theme that you're going to hit on pretty hard at Adobe Max with new product announcements, and that's collaboration. So across Photoshop and Illustrator, it's there. It's part of the case for the Figma acquisition itself. And so there's this kind of collaboration productivity push happening right now in enterprise software some, from some corners where you might not have expected it a few years ago. Salesforce, Slack is part of that. The rise of Atlassian is part of that. What's the most important thing to get right as you pursue that storyline? Well, Adobe has actually always been about collaboration, John. And if you think about PDF and the role that PDF plays, PDF's always been about how do you communicate your ideas, but you communicate them in an asynchronous way. And I think what's happened with the pandemic and post-pandemic is in this hybrid work environment, when people are not in the same place at the same time, the question is the sort of innovation that you've done on asynchronous collaboration, how do you do that synchronously? So how do you do the brainstorming? How do you do the ideation? How do you incorporate uh, feedback in a real-time manner so that you can really accelerate? Uh, because people are trying to personalize content more. They're trying to create these campaigns and distribute the campaigns. And so what we are going to talk about is whether it's what we are doing with Photoshop and Illustrator in terms of share for review, incorporating it, the acquisition, as you know, of Frame.io, uh, which dramatically accelerates what you can do with video, Workfront and what we are doing as it relates to marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. So it's a theme because it's one of those uh, incredible opportunities for us to get a number of creators and stakeholders, whether it's individuals or whether it's teams, working in a really uh, accelerated fashion. CEO of Goldman Sachs was on Squawk Box this morning talking about just how uncertain, how volatile the economic environment is. Adobe has put out its own holiday projections and it looks like uh, flat in some ways, if you're looking at revenue throughout the season, down in some ways perhaps in units. If you're looking back over the past several years, how choppy, how uncertain is this economic environment from your perspective? Well, I think there are two ways to look at it, John. The first is the macroeconomic environment and consumer confidence and CEO confidence. You probably saw the report where CEOs are a little bit more pessimistic as it relates to the next environment, whether it's what's happening with inflation or what's happening with the energy uh, situation in Europe. So I think most people uh, today, if they were polled, would feel like the you know, situation is not going to be as good as it was for the last four or five years in the next 12 months. Having said that, you have to unpack that and also look at what's happening with digital. And as it relates to digital, uh, even if the growth is not the kind of growth that you experienced, that shift 
uh, of moving from physical to digital is not going to change. Mm -hmm. And so it may be, you know, a deceleration of the growth relative to what it's happened, but it's still growth and it's still a movement that's going to happen. And so I think you have to unpack what's happening on the overall macroeconomic situation where there's perhaps a little bit more pessimism versus what's happening in digital where that relentless move is only going to continue.